Everly Ayers. She had the longest eyelashes I think I've ever seen. Uh, and her feet were so big. <laughs> she had a full head of hair. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. Katie, we are so happy to have you here today and to hear the story of your sweet daughter, Everly. Thank you so much for coming on today and chatting with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. (laughs) I, uh, so I wanted just to really quickly, um, kind of tell everybody that this is a this one's kind of a special one for us cuz um Katie is uh Katie do you want to tell us about how long ago Everly was born at, at the time of this recording? Yes, uh, at the time of this recording, we are actually just shy of her first birthday. Yeah, just like a a week and a half ish, I want to say. Yeah. So yep. so thank you for coming on. This is these are always like really um little tender, tender moments for us when we are able to talk to moms who have um, gone through this and are are still very new in their grief. So thank you so much for coming on. Katie, tell us a little bit about yourself. We're so pleased to meet you. And so tell us about who you are and what you do and what your family looks like and kind of where you're based out of. Yeah. um, So we're uh, out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, My husband and I and our little dog, Bentley, um, Everly was our, our first child. Um, <laughs> so we don't have any living children. I am a chemist, uh, for Woo-hoo! a paint and coating company. You so. are? That is cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what I do every day. I make paint. So that's cool. <laughs> never, never boring. Yeah. So I think that's awesome. I didn't know that. I I did chemistry in undergraduate as well and just super loved it. And so, but mine, I went into the drug situation. So. Oh yeah. (laughs) Complete opposite. Yeah. Complete opposite. Exactly. And what do you guys like to do in your spare time and any hobbies that you guys like to do? Yeah. So I, I'm a big cook. Um, I love to cook. Um, we're actually getting ready to redo our kitchen and our new house. So, um, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, and, and as you can see behind me, um, we have two classic cars, um, which are a pretty big hobby of my husband's. And I've kind of tagged along with that. <laughs> so you know, fun. Since we've been together. So very cool. And I think um, Katie and I were talking a little bit beforehand, and she mentioned that this is a original Mini Cooper, that picture behind her. And I thought was like, whoa, that is so cool. And they restored it and everything. I just, I think that's pretty neat. So yeah, right hand um, drive too. So oh, yeah. Uh, well, the first time I rode in that, I was terrified. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> I'd be like, where, where do I need to put my feet and hands in? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's awesome. What kind are you like a big cook? Uh, are you cook, baker, all of the above? I would say more so the cook side, mm. less the baking side. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Fun. So we like to do like cooking classes and wine dinners and things like that whenever we get the chance. You know, mm. every year when we go on vacation, there's a, a place that does cooking classes. So we like to do that. Very cool. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm like, oh man, that's our jam too. (laughs) It's like, we love doing that kind of stuff. Oh, very cool. Well, thank you so much for telling us about yourself. Um, Okay. And then tell me, um, were you guys planning on getting pregnant? Was this um, getting pregnant with Everly? Was that a surprise? Was that on on your radar at all? Um, Tell us how you, how that progressed. 
Yeah, so we were definitely planning um, to have her. I, I think we were, had been trying for probably about four or five months. We had actually, my husband's grandmother had passed away in January mm -hmm. of 2021. Mm -hmm. And we actually found out we were pregnant the month after. Oh. Um, yeah, so... It was kind of special, you know, yeah. we kind of thought, you know, maybe she had blessed us, you know, with our baby. Yeah. And it was, I think came as a surprise to the rest of our family, Oh, um, which I wasn't expecting. I mean, they I must have assumed that we didn't want children because oh. <laughs> um, we, we don't tend to follow. We kind of go to the beat of our own drum, you know, we we dated for a long time. We were engaged for a long time before we got married. And, you know, we kind of just enjoyed married life for, you know, six years before, before we even decided to start trying. So I, I think it was really special timing. Yeah. Um, the way it all happened. So, yeah. That's... And we, we oh, actually God. announced our pregnancy um, on Mother's Day. Oh, you did. Yeah. So how did, we, how did that go? Uh, Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. So we had um, my parents and my husband's best parents over for like a, a morning brunch. And, you know, I made this whole big spread and, and it was nice. And I don't think they were really expecting anything, but, uh, you know, I, I gave our moms like a little gift. Um, and inside was a, a, you know, a little pair of booties um, oh. with a picture of of her sonogram that we had at the time yeah you know and it said you know by two hands and two feet you know with love and I forget exactly what it said but our family grows and I had them open it at the same time so that one didn't know before the other yeah um and it was it was funny because I think they both like took a while to realize like what we were telling them <laughs> No, read it again. <laughs> yeah. Look at the picture. And then you just hear this like big shrill come out of both of their mouths. And and my dad is a photographer. So he like immediately snatched it from my mom and started taking pictures. And it was it was really special. Oh, that's that is wonderful. I that's a, and exciting too. Like I just, you know, telling telling your families is so, so exciting. Uh, one thing I forgot to ask, are your families then nearby where you guys are at then? Yes. Okay. Both of our families are nearby. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And you guys basically grew up in the same area, uh, like grew up there, kind of still stay there. Yeah. That's one thing about Pittsburghers. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> they always stay around or, or if they leave, they always come back. They always come back. So, <laughs> so we, we never really left. So that's great. We're, we're lifetimers, I guess. Yeah. If you love the area, you love the area. So, okay, well, cool. And and so it's nice that your family is nearby. Is that maybe, would that have been like a first grandchild for them or um, or something like one of the first children, grandchildren on their either side? For my parents, it was their first grandchild. Um, and for Seth's parents, it was their second. That's still very, so, so exciting. So, okay, everybody's really excited. So that was in Mother's Day. So that was really just a couple of months after you found out, right? That you were. Pregnant. Yeah. So I think I was 15 weeks. Oh, okay. At the time that we okay. told them. And before that, you had obviously gone in to the doctors, gotten at least a sonogram. Can you tell me how that those first appointments and such were and how everything looked? Yeah. So I mean, this being my first pregnancy, I really had no idea what to expect. Mm -hmm. I know that first appointment, I, I think I was pretty nervous, um, oh, yeah. just going in and, you know, getting that confirmation, um, that we were expecting. And I guess I, I was expecting, you know, as soon as we go in, they're gonna, we're gonna listen to the heartbeat and, and everything, but, you know, it was still too early to get yeah. that heartbeat. Um, so, and then they bombard you with all this test, this testing options. Like, do you want this genetic screening? Do you yeah. want this? Do you want that? And, and you're kind of like, your head is exploding. You're like, well, I don't know. You're the doctor. Like you tell me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind, of, 
situation. So then we decided to go ahead with like the genetic screening, which is mm-hmm. when we had our first ultrasound at 12 weeks um, and we first saw our baby. Um, so, but everything went really smoothly. Like I was never sick. I, I didn't throw up one time. Oh, nice. I, my whole pregnancy, like I had never felt better. Like I, I almost oh. wish I was still pregnant because that's how good I felt. Dang. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I know. I was like, well, that's not the way it was for me. Hun. <laughs> um, yeah. Was, was Seth able to come to your appointments or did I, I, you know, you just don't quite know. Cause it was still kind of in the middle of um, pandemic procedures at hospitals and clinics and stuff. So was he able to attend some of those? Yeah. So he was able to come, um, to all of my prenatal appointments. He never missed one. Um, so he was there for, for everything. Awesome. Okay. And then, um, and then, so you announced it around 15 weeks, you're feeling great. Everything's looking good. And, And those early appointments, they're not as often, they're probably like what, once a month or so, it seems like. And so, and those, how were those progressing? Did those look good as well? Yeah. Everything looked great. Okay. And yeah, no worries, no signs of, of concern or. Yeah. And you did the genetic testing at 12 weeks too. So did you guys uh, get the information back kind of early? Did you want to find out if Everly was a girl or a boy? No. So we did not find out. Oh, so okay. We didn't find out until she was born. Oh, um, really a boy or a girl yeah oh I I always said you know this is one of life's only truest surprises (laughs) so I didn't want to I didn't didn't want to spoil it it. (laughs) (laughs) that is that's fun okay so then I'm assuming you just had a running list of names and um not not really actually we didn't start talking about names until probably the last few weeks of pregnancy you know I had my list you know I think that's pretty common. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, that, that we think about names, um, a lot more than, than men do. So yeah. when I finally like tried to get him to like, Hey, you know, we really need to think about a name for our baby. Um, uh, here's some of the things that I thought about. Yeah. So. Yeah. So fun. I mean, well, and I don't know, I just think of the, having two, two lists basically, um, um, boy names and girl names I was like oh that's tough <laughs> so yeah good, and good on it, you. what was interesting is you know for a girl like we really only had one girl's name mm. picked out uh, and then the boy's name uh, was going to be a spur of the moment decision so oh. we we didn't decide you <laughs> we just didn't, didn't have a decision <laughs> so I guess it was kind of meant to be yeah yeah Awesome. Well, um, and then so kind of the one of the milestones that we always kind of look for is the 20 week ultrasound, which is an an anatomy scan. How did that look um, when you guys went in for that one? Yeah, our anatomy scan looks perfect. Uh, She (laughs) behaved very well um, (laughs) up up until her. I think they needed her like right hand or something. Mm -hmm. She just was hiding her right hand the whole time. Oh, (laughs) funny because when they finally got it she was like holding her middle finger up like (laughs) she was like I don't want to show you my right hand (laughs) well that's kind of funny (laughs) yeah a little sassy there (laughs) yeah and I I kind of had a feeling that she was a girl the Mm -hmm. whole time um up until that 20 week anatomy scan but then she just looked so long like Mm. She would like stretch out like on the sonogram and, and just looked really, really long. So yeah. I was like, oh, maybe it is a boy. You know, both my husband and his brother are like super tall. Oh, really? So so maybe, maybe it is a boy. I don't know. Yeah. But but everything looked great. There were oh. no no signs of concern. Awesome. And you were still feeling good too. Yeah, feeling great the whole time. I think I had one week where I had like some back pain like some sharp like back pain like Mm. sciatica type Mm. things but you know then I immediately went and got one of those pregnancy pillows and oh yeah problem solved (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) yeah god generally I was like you're one of those pregnancy unicorn people (laughs) they talk about like pregnancy was awesome and (laughs) okay so you're you're progressing along and 
everything's looking good. Did you guys end up having like baby showers? And it's always fun to talk about the celebration stuff yeah, too. So. Yeah, we we had a a shower by mail. Oh, you did? What we ended up doing. Yeah, yeah. I was still really concerned, you know, yeah. with it being the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, even though we were kind of used to it by by right. that time. Yeah. Um, I still didn't want to, you know, expose myself to anything that I didn't need to be exposed to to kind of keep the baby safe. Um, and I'm I've never was a big fan of of showers and <laughs> and having that attention on myself. Yeah. So I kind of just, oh, a shower by mail, maybe that's kind of perfect for us. So, that's so that's what we did. And, and I actually waited like, cause I couldn't decide, you know, what to do. So it wasn't until probably the end of September that we ended up sending out invitations and, so and all the, we had like, we sent out little prediction cards for everybody that they could send back. To us like is it going to be a boy or a girl like Cute. what time will they be born who are they going to look like yeah you know advice type thing so people could still participate and feel yeah. like they're they're celebrating her yeah did you have um so you did this in, I, I guess I'm not as familiar with the baby shower by mail so you just kind of send invitations out, kind of have a little bit of like, oh, here's the registry. Here's some fun things that you can participate in. Did you guys end up having like a little Zoom call or anything too at the end or um, or was it just like, oh, just whenever? Yeah, it was just whenever. And okay. we, we, we had kind of planned like, you know, maybe after the baby was born, we would we would do something. Yeah. Then. Okay. It's always so. nice when, yeah, you've got that. You get to show off your baby. It's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> but we had took like, maternity pictures Mm -hmm. um my brother-in-law's girlfriend so graciously took them for us when we were on vacation at the beach oh nice! so they were really pretty so we put those pictures like on the invitations and so so people could kind of see you know what I was looking like pregnant and that's awesome yeah we were I know it's interesting being pregnant during the pandemic because you don't like there was just not as much contact. And so people, some people didn't know, like when we were pregnant, no clue that we were pregnant because you just don't see people. And so there's just doesn't come up. So, well, well, good. Um, Okay. So you're getting to the end of your, your pregnancy. It's probably what October or so. How are things looking then too? Are you going in, you're going in quite more, a little bit more often, I'm assuming. Yes. So we were going in every week at that point um we would go in they'd listen to the heartbeat you know they'd measure my belly with the tape measure Mm -hmm. and and kind of just double check yeah and everything was still so good and looking great were you um paying attention to any of her movements um or counting kicks or anything like that was that something that you were asked to do or kind of recommended to do actually that's something I mean that's a bit of a sore point for me um I had asked my doctor you know probably at the beginning of my third trimester you know Mm -hmm. do I need to be counting counting the baby's kicks regularly is you know because I'm a very worried person Mm -hmm. just in general so counting the kicks was something that kind of gave me a bit of anxiety yeah um but she was like no no it's as long as the baby's moving and you're feeling them you know, there's nothing to, to be concerned about. Yeah. Basically. So she kind of made it seem like. It's no know, big deal. No big deal. Yeah. You were, I mean, but ev- was she pretty active though? Like you, you felt her pretty regularly throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So then tell me how things progressed as you, as you got along, because as we're getting along to the very end, that's kind of when things don't turn out so great. So. Right. Yeah. So I had, uh, I had planned to work up until, you know, I kind of went into labor, but, Yeah. you know, then I was thinking, I was like, oh, maybe I want to take like a week or so just to kind of relax, to kind of prepare myself, mm-hmm. I guess, get my nesting yeah. mode activated. Um, so I ended up taking, you know, the week before her due date off of work. So I pretty much just kind of hung out, lounged in bed. I'm like, this is probably going to be the last time I'm going to be able to do this. Yeah. You know, 
um, my dog Bentley, she was like glued to my oh, side. Really? Like the whole week. Yeah. She would be snuggled up to my belly next to me. You know, if my husband went to like help me up, like out of a chair, she would be really like aggressive, like marking and protective. <laughs> so I don't know if she had sensed oh. like something was happening. Yeah. Um, or what I, I just still think about that to this day, like how, hmm. how protective and like, she never left my side essentially. Wow. Um, but I had that last appointment. It was October 29th on a Friday, you know, my weekly appointment, we went in, she listened to the heartbeat. The heartbeat was strong, measured my belly. You know, at that point we were starting to talk about induction dates, mm-hmm. you know, if the baby wasn't coming, I was already three centimeters dilated oh, okay. by that point. But she was like, I mean, I don't think you're going to need to be induced. I think this baby's going to come. But that was something, you know, if the baby doesn't come over the weekend, you know, we're going to schedule your, your induction date. Yeah. Okay. So that was on a Friday. And then on Saturday, you know, again, just kind of chillax day, you mm-hmm. know, watching football games and and everything and I I joke well I don't I wouldn't want to say joke but all my husband's favorite team college teams were playing that day <laughs> um and they were big games mm-hmm. and they all lost oh. and he was like this is the worst day ever like <laughs> you know like yeah <laughs> yeah and so then we were you know talking you know when do you think this baby's gonna come and, and everything he was like holding my belly and then all of a sudden the baby like makes this like huge kick and movement. Like as soon as he said that, and I was like, Oh, maybe that's a sign. Like they're getting ready to come, you know? And so then we, that was later at night. So went to bed and, and I woke up that, that morning on the 31st, which was her due date. Mm -hmm. And I just had this like overwhelming sense of like doom Mm. like it's like I almost like knew that something was wrong um I think at that time I was I was having a little bit of contractions like you could see like my belly moving yeah but it, it didn't feel like like her kicks um but I was like I'm gonna have breakfast you know she always moves after breakfast yeah so I had breakfast and, and still nothing. And again, like I said, I'm, I was a very worried person. So I was like, oh, this is probably all in your head. You know, nothing's probably, everything's probably fine. You know, there was, we were just at the doctor's like two days ago. Yeah. So she was great then. But, uh, you know, then I called the, I called the on-call doctor and, and they told me the spiel, oh, have a Coke, like eat something sweet you know and then wait like an hour or two and and if they're still not moving you know come in to to labor and delivery so I'm not a big fan of coke so I was like I'm not gonna drink a coke yeah or like yeah and but I just still had this feeling like like something was wrong so we ended up going into into triage mm-hmm. um you know, I was, we sat in the waiting room for a little while um, while they like, I, I don't know what they do, but you always have to wait. So um, then we got called back, you know, we didn't bring any bags or anything into mm-hmm. the hospital with us, you know, cause we were like, oh, they're just going to check us and then they're going to send us back home. Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. So the nurse went to put me on the monitor um, and she was having trouble finding finding the heartbeat so then she leaves the room somebody else comes in and tries and they're not finding the heartbeat either so then they leave to get a doctor and I I said to my husband like they're not even looking in the right place like you know you they always find the heartbeat on on my right side and Uh they're looking on my left side so I'm just thinking oh they don't they don't know what they're doing okay okay um so then the doctor comes in and, and she's she's not finding the heartbeat either so then she left again to get 
like the one of those portable ultrasounds Mm -hmm. and she's putting it on and it's not like one of the big ultrasounds where you can clearly see like where the baby is and and everything is kind of hard to to make out what they're what they're looking at and again she goes to leave and I said like is everything okay and she was like I'm gonna be honest I I don't like what I'm what I'm seeing And then she brings another doctor in almost as like confirmation. And they just said, I'm so sorry. And it was that point, I think I just went into like complete shock. Like, I don't even think tears like come down my face at that point. I just, I couldn't believe what was happening. Like, again, we, you know, we were just at the doctor's, like, everything was great. Like, we were planning for her birth. And by this time, it was, like, it was Halloween. It was trick-or-treat time. Like, and then we had to call our families and to tell them what had happened. You know, my my nephew's, like, just going out for trick-or-treat and, and, like, telling that to the family was just so heartbreaking I mean I my husband did it I I didn't do it but and then it was just I was just so silent like I didn't know what to do at that point I mean I could still hear the clock like on the wall just like ticking like it was that silent and I just didn't know what to do they said you know you can go home and and we can schedule you know what to do next and I was like well what's next do you just give me a c-section like I mean how basically how does this baby come out like she she's dead you know and that's when they were like oh no like you you have to be induced like like you have to give birth and like hearing that is just like, how am I going to give birth to death? Basically, like at that point, I and mean, this is going to sound horrible, but I just wanted her out of me, you know, like knowing that I was holding my dead baby, like it's just unfathomable. It's just something you never, never think in your wildest dreams, like you're gonna have to do so I mean my husband he was more so like ready to to go let's like let's go home and I was basically like no like I can't go home like this like I just I just want this to be over with you know I just I need her out of me like I just can't so we stayed the night and they ended up starting the induction you know late that night yeah and and I labored you know all through the night um did you ask any of your parents to come and did they were they even able to come and no because that point I mean it was you know, I wasn't planning on having anybody but my husband, mm-hmm. you know, in the delivery room with me. And, and especially now, like, I, I didn't want anybody but him, basically. So. So you just ended up staying, you labored all night because um, they did start you on an induction. And so uh, was there any plans for like how are the contractions and stuff like that? Were you starting to feel it? Like I, it's it's pretty intense when you get induced, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah, well, they pretty much were like, you know, offered me an epidural right away. Yeah. So, to be honest, I don't think I even really felt, you know, fully felt the contractions because, you know, I pretty much just got got the epidural right away. I I didn't really want to be any more. In, in any more pain than I already was yeah. emotionally. So I just 
I took it right away. Yeah. Good. I think that's, that's good. Were you and Seth, were you guys able to talk about like that? You know, it's one of those things where I just remember like my husband and I, it was so hard to just find words sometimes to talk about what well, after finding out and just being so devastated. I don't like, how are you and Seth doing while you're at the hospital by yourselves? Like, you know, it's, that's rough. Yeah. I mean, I think it was pretty, I mean, we really didn't talk about it. Um, you know, I was trying to get as much rest as I could you know, as I was laboring to kind of prepare myself. Um, and I think he was just kind of still in shock as well. I mean, it's so hard to, to process it. And like, we don't, we didn't even know what to do. I mean, the, we were just kind of winging it essentially. Yeah. Did you feel like though the, the medical team was helping you through that? Like, I know like you, you're saying you, they, you were kind of winging it again. I guess you do. Like you don't ever expect to be in this situation, but were they helping you kind of go through that and what to expect? And yeah, I mean, my nurses were, were great. Um, I, I really regret, I, I feel so bad. I wish I remembered their names, but I just, <laughs> yeah, I can't, but she was basically, you know, just whatever you need essentially and she kind of said we're just gonna let you go and labor up until you know you feel that that urge that sense that you need to push and yeah you know because there's no real concerns you know the baby's already dead you know they they wanted the pushing process to be very quick and easy so she's like we're just gonna let the baby drop you know as far as possible and and hopefully you'll it'll be no more than 30 minutes of of pushing and, and you'll have your baby. I wish that was the case, but, but it wasn't, it was more like three hours of pushing, um, before she was born. So, yeah. Yeah. So you, you labored all night and when did you, when did you start to feel like you were going to need to push then? Yeah, so it it had to have been the morning. I just remember, you know, the nurse's shift change had changed. Oh, okay. Um, So we had got new nurses in. So I had to wait for the new nurses. And then that's when we started to push. Okay. But three hours. Yeah, I had no no sense of time. Yeah. At that point, I had no idea what time of day it was or anything like that. I didn't even... It didn't even feel like three hours to me of pushing. I don't know if I just kind of like, you know, blacked out or, or what. I mean, I remember being very uncomfortable pushing, like being in a lot of like my hips really hurt mm-hmm. and a lot of pain. And like, I, I needed to feel like I needed to be on my side to oh, push. So okay. I, I pushed a lot on my side, like either side. Um, but then they were finally like, no, like you need to go on your back. Like you need to you need to really push so so that's what I did and and then she was born and you know well I guess I should backtrack you know while we're in labor they they ask you all these questions yes like do you want to hold the baby do you want to see the baby do you want a memory box do you want to take pictures like the questions just go on and on I'm like I shouldn't have to answer any of these questions. Like, is this real life? Is this really happening to me? Like, I couldn't believe it. I mean, most of the questions were like, no brainer. Like, of course, yes, I want to hold my baby. Yes, I want the pictures. Yes, I want the memory box. I want it all. Yeah. And it was just like, just unbelievable. But as soon as she was born, they immediately put, well, put them on my chest, um, but, you know, they had asked Seth, like, do you want to tell her what it is? And and he told me it's a girl. And he was like, this is our Emily. Cause, you know, we only had one girl they picked out. And, and that's that's what she was going to be. She was going to be Emily. So, you know, they put her on my chest. And, and that's when it really hit me. And all the emotion, like, just bold bawled my eyes out she was so perfect like 
in every way. And I just, I just couldn't believe it. Like, it was just so silent in the room. But it was just unbelievable. But then, you know, there were issues. My placenta wouldn't, wouldn't deliver. Oh. So, you know, as I'm holding her, they're like pushing on my belly and like, you know, trying to get, get the placenta out. And they ended up having to like extract it manually and, oh. and doing all this, you know, while I'm, while I'm holding my daughter. And it was just, I guess it was a good distraction, you know, because I was focused mostly on her as opposed to, you know, what was happening. But yeah, and then it it got to the point where like I wasn't feeling great, you know. I was kind of lightheaded and and nauseous, and yeah. so I told Seth, you know, take the baby because I don't know if I can hold her, and and yeah. So so yeah. then there was going through that, and then I was so tired that I just started, you know, falling asleep almost and. Well, you had been laboring all night too, and uh, like on top of the stress and sadness, and yeah. Um, what time was she born? She was born at eleven forty in the morning. Eleven forty, and how big was she? Because you said she, she was, was real long, right? <laughs> yeah, she was seven pounds fifteen ounces. Um, and she was twenty and a half inches long. Wow. I don't know if that's really tall or not, but I think it is. It's a lot taller than my kids were. Did Seth? So did, Seth took Everly with um him. Did he? Did he hold her for a little bit? Did they get her wrapped up and everything? And um, yeah. So I mean, we held her for a while, just you know, before they they really wrapped her up, and and you know, I made sure I said, you know, can you weigh her on the scale and you know, everything that you would normally do, basically. And I, I told him to go with it, go with her and take a picture, you know, with her on the scale and get her weight and and everything just like, just like he normally would. He got to cut the cord. So like we tried to, tried to make it as normal as possible, as normal as possible, but I mean, how can you do that, you know, when your your baby is is there still, essentially? Uh, but you know, of course, we asked right away, like, is is something abnormal? Like, yeah, is there a reason for this happening? And and she was born with a nuchal cord, um, but they said that that what likely wasn't the cause they're like oh babies are born with nuchal cords all the time and they're just fine but her face was was on the darker side um which I had noticed like right away like almost like black and blue to a certain extent and and they had told me like oh that's probably just from from the labor and her kind of being smushed I guess yeah yeah coming through and I was like oh okay I mean I I didn't know any better yeah exactly um they did say her placenta was on the smaller side but they didn't think it was small enough to to cause any issue um and you know they say sometimes this just happens you know babies just die and a lot of times we don't we don't know why I'm like okay that's like the last thing I want to hear at this point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're like, there has to be, it feels like it should have a, yeah, yeah. something. And I'm a scientist. So like, exactly. I need an answer for everything. Like there's, you know, you do X, Y, and Z and this happens. Yeah. Like there's a logical chain of events here. Yeah. And you telling me that this just happens and you don't know why, like, yeah. So they really didn't think that the cord, um, so like for every, just for listener's sake, um, a nuchal cord is usually, right, like a, the cord is around the neck, um, but it it sounds like it was maybe lo- kind of on the looser side, right? Like they, they didn't, they were not worried yeah, about it. Yeah, they didn't say it was 
tight or anything like that. Okay. So I, I think that's why they were like, does it, it make any sense wasn't. that it was not? Okay. Yeah. No, oh, I'm sorry. Just, it is hard like to hear that. You're like, we don't know. And what other things did you guys do while you had time with Everly? Yeah, so we actually um, were offered a bereavement doula. Um, oh, you were? Yeah. Um, so I think at first we weren't really sure, mm-hmm. you know, what a bereavement doula even was. Yeah. And why we would need one or yeah. what they did or anything like that. And I think we were both kind of like not sure. Mm-hmm. And it was just like this. I will call it magical person like just showed up and my husband and I were both like who are you and what are you doing in here like Mm -hmm. like kind of looking at her like with her eyes crossed almost yeah but but we're really glad um that we had her she kind of helped support us um and kind of give us ideas on on how we should spend our time with Everly um and just memories to make with her uh, as much as we could so you know we tried to take every second that we could with her um we ended up spending gosh it was probably like maybe three days two and a half days in the hospital with her I guess it immediately started you know right after Seth's parents had come down I don't know if he told them to come down but they also magically appeared you know in the room you know probably a few hours after her birth and they had held well his mom had held her you know for a little while Mm -hmm. and and then they had they had left for the day they didn't spend that much time you know the day of her birth um with us you know we were moving from you know the labor and delivery room oh. to our other room but we had had our bereavement doula and you know we ended up um you know dressing her and you know cutting her hair and doing handprints and footprints and and pictures I can't tell you how many pictures we took it's probably over like a thousand pictures good you should we had we had taken you know the the hospital has like a little courtyard you know we took her for a walk outside we picked flowers with her um my husband and I or my husband and Everly had a father-daughter dance like in the courtyard we had played you know, our wedding song and, and they had danced together, uh, which was really special uh, to watch. Um, you know, we had books. Um, we would read to her um, every night. Uh, we were given, you know, on the night you were born, we were given that book by our doula and there was a really nice letter from another lost mom. Oh in there kind of you know you know validating what we were feeling and and kind of what to expect and and kind of just really nice words of encouragement so we read to her um you know my parents ended up coming in the next day and and spent some time um and we we say like we got cake from the cafeteria there and (laughs) We sang happy birthday. Um, We even like dipped her finger in the icing and (laughs) put it all over her face. Like like she would have had, you know, next week. But but we knew that that wasn't going to be an option. So so we tried to do it it then. And I had even said to my husband, oh, I wish our dog Bentley was here to meet her. And we actually asked the hospital and they said yes. (laughs) So his parents brought our dog dog in. 
and we had this little room and she came in and immediately jumped up on my lap and and I'm holding Everly and she just like went right up to her face and sniffed her and gave her some kisses. Oh, she's so precious. Oh man, your hospital's awesome. Like, I, I think yeah, was awesome that they so did that. Glad, so glad that we were able to do that. Um, you know, we went for a walk again in the courtyard, you know, as our full family, you know, with our dog Bentley. And, <laughs> And everything and yeah so we had like really special moments with her in the hospital I almost like I didn't want to leave yeah. basically yeah you know because then that that would mean that I would have to to say goodbye forever essentially and I just didn't want to have to say goodbye so yeah never do we never do. I think it's kind of cool that I, I want to point out that you guys were there for like three days, right? Is that what you said? Three days with her. And that's, I, I, the, did the hospital have a policy of how long you could keep her? Um, or was it kind of just open-ended and what you, what you needed and felt like you needed to t- spend with her? Yeah, they pretty much said, you know, as much time as you need, you know, we'll support you. You know, they gave us the cuddle cot. So we had that. Oh no, I wish I would have known. I kept wrapping her up in blankets. I know, I know right? It's it's an instinct, right? You you, yeah. you do that. You're a mom. Yeah. So. That's amazing. I think that's that's so great. Um, yeah, and then that that night, you know, I was like, yeah, I was kind of like, well, you know, we can't stay here forever. I mean, we're gonna have to say goodbye at at some point. So we kind of like, it almost was like those three days were so fast and busy, like, because we were trying to pack a lifetime, basically, (laughs) of memories into, you know, these few days that, you know, it was kind of nice, you know, when we kind of decided like, okay, we're going to leave tonight. You know, this is going to be our last night. And we kind of, you know, essentially kicked everybody out you know, nurses and everything, we kind of let them know, like, we're planning on leaving tonight. And, you know, we're going to take our, our final moments with her. And, and we asked for like another blanket, another hat, you know, because I wanted to take everything with me, all the outfits, like the blanket she had when she immediately was born and, and everything with us. So, so we had, you know, extra, because I didn't want to lose, you know, I wanted to wrap her up and, and dress her to leave her. Um, so we played like nursery rhymes and, and sang to her as we kind of, you know, wrapped her up and, and took, you know, undressed her from the clothes she was in and, and kind of really had those special, you know, last moments, just, just the three of us. And, you know, I mean, we took her time. I mean, this was probably like three or four hours long yeah. you know getting those last pictures and and everything we possibly could think of you know in yeah I mean I think that was probably like one of the hardest moments was leaving that, that hospital without her yeah did you bring Everly to the nurses or did you leave the room I think there's kind of a difference of like okay we're leaving you here <laughs> or did you take yeah, her and so have her we kind of we had our nurse I guess it was kind of a bit of a bit of both like we were going to leave her with the nurse but then we had so much stuff <laughs> that we needed help getting out of the car yeah and so she actually ended up having to help us out to the car and and she kind of left Everly with with another nurse um while we were doing that but I don't never forget she helped she gave me the biggest hug and and held me so tight before we left the hospital 
I'll never forget that. You know, she gave me her personal number, you know, if we needed anything afterward. And and she gave me a little necklace, you know, two hearts combined. And it would be really sweet. I mean, the nurses were, were great. I mean, even the labor and delivery nurse that I had overnight, you know, before she was born, she came back the next day, oh. you know, yeah. to check on us and yeah. and to see Everly. And, and, you know, it's just really sweet. I, I don't know if if other nurses would have would have remembered to do that. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's really special. I'm so sorry. Um, you guys had um when you left the hospital, were you guys planning on doing anything special for her as in way of memorial or a funeral? Because I know that's yeah. probably one of the things that they bugged you about. One of the questions they asked about while you were at the hospital, because it's so <laughs> you're like, why do I have to, what am I doing here? What I, why am I doing this? It's so, yeah. So yeah. we did have a funeral. Um, that was one of the things I remember being in the, in the room, you know, with my in-laws who were like on the phone with the funeral home and everything. And, and I was just kind of angry because I was like, I'm trying to spend as much time with my daughter as I can. Like, I don't want to have to be thinking about burying her right now. Like, like can't this wait basically yeah but yeah so we had set up the appointments and everything for the next few days to plan everything out and and that's one thing that you never never expect to do um but I'll never forget pulling into our house you know after we left the hospital it was that empty car seat in the back you know, because we had had the car seat in, we brought it with us, you know, we thought, you know, we were going to be, might be leaving with a baby, but, and my husband just looked at me and, and said, you know, from here on out, like, it's you and me, like, we have to be strong, and, and we have to do this together. And we just sat there and basically held each other, you know, before we even got out of the car. But I'm so glad he he did that. He said that to me, you know, because it was just, just knowing that that he was there to support me and I was there to support him and that this was going to be the hardest thing that we would ever have to go through and we didn't we didn't want it to break us I mean you you probably know the statistics and it's terrifying so you know we really have to try hard you know to do this together and not let it drive us apart but yeah the next day you know after we got home you know we went to the funeral home and and started planning her her funeral um you know we really wanted it to be an open casket you know we wanted people to see her and and how perfect she looked and and they had originally told us like We don't think, you know, based on what she had looked like, we don't think it could be an open casket. And we were both, like, devastated. Devastated. Um, But we had asked them, like, please, like, do everything you can to try. And I I don't think they realized, like, that we had spent all this time for her, with her, and, like, we knew what she looked like. Yeah because when it came time like they brought like we let they let us see her and we were like oh, she looks great like oh good you know so yeah. so 
yeah, we we ended up being able to have an open casket and and I'll never forget like when they brought this casket into the room that day like I was like oh my so small like I don't know what I was expecting but I was definitely wasn't expecting that yeah I mean but have like a little pillow and and everything I was just like okay well at least she'll be comfortable um but it's just nothing like I ever expected to have to do in my life yeah but we had um had I guess it was two days of visitation and and the and a service for her and I don't know why we decided to do two days I guess because it was on a, a Sunday and a Monday and we didn't think that some people would be able to come and see her on a Monday with work and everything yeah so we decided to do the two days and I don't know why I even agreed to to that because it was just so hard and exhausting and but the funeral home probably thought we were crazy because (laughs) we had so much stuff (laughs) oh really we brought everything like we had printed out all the pictures we had with her and put them in frames and and I shadow boxed her little outfits that she wore and her blankets and her teddy bears and everything and everything it was like (laughs) like do you need more tables and we were like yes yes actually bring those in (laughs) so we had like all this stuff like (laughs) it was just you know slideshow playing on the computer like everything you could imagine we had that is awesome and they were like oh my god these people (laughs) but they said yes to everything they you know they didn't tell us no once so so we're very thankful for that but but I just remember the line of people it was just non-stop oh like the whole the whole time And I mean, I was exhausted. I mean, obviously I just given birth and my milk had started to come in, which was like the worst thing ever. So yeah, it's just like everything on top of everything on top of everything. But, but it was nice knowing that, you know, so many people showed up for her. And we actually the the pastor who married us came down for her service and and baptized her, um, which was really special. I don't think we would have wanted anybody else to do it. Mm, yeah. And you know he 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 speaks so well, and he was like, you know, go in your nursery, cry. Like there was gonna be crying happening in that nursery anyway, but <laughs> you know you know, do it together and and his words were just so special and and I'll never forget them. You had a lot of people at at her funeral. I think that is a testament to your friends and family that just really wanted to support you. Was it just, is it people from your church and your work and your friends and family groups and such? Yeah, it was a a mix of, of everything. You know, even like our parents' friends, you know, some people I didn't even know who they were yeah. <laughs> yeah. going up. And, but yeah. Did you have a a little service as well then? Did that pastor speak as at the at that as well? Yeah. Yeah, he did. And and you know, my husband spoke. Uh, oh, he did. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. I mean he and he put together a video like he worked so hard on it but he didn't want anybody helping him with it he wanted to do it himself and you know that was his labor of love to to Everly and and you know I don't know if I call it a eulogy or or his speech basically you know I just remember him working on it you know all night his handwritten, he wrote a handwritten note to her and put it in her casket. It was just so special. 
we left actually a little mini Cooper toy car you know, in her <laughs> coffin in car. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, <laughs> and a little teddy bear and, and we put like a good night moon the mm-hmm. book which is one that we read to her while we were in the hospital we put it in there with her is she um then is she buried kind of nearby to you guys I, I you know cemeteries are kind of funny they're not everywhere sometimes so yeah so I mean she's probably it's probably about 25 to 30 minutes Mm. I mean maybe uh, I don't really know actually but Seth's parents actually had two extra burial plots like we have like a kind of a family mm. section Mm -hmm. and so they had an extra two plots that we they so graciously, you know, gave to us. So we ended up burying Everly right next to his grandmother. Oh. Um, who had passed, you know, that in January. January. Yeah. So that's nice. She's she's there with somebody then. That <laughs> Yeah. Did you end up finding out did did they end up doing any additional autopsy? Like did they do an, an autopsy or a partial autopsy too? And yeah, any so sort of definitive. We did, we did do an autopsy because you know, I need to know, yeah, um, what had happened. Um, but we really didn't, they didn't give us the autopsy results until we like asked for them. It was hmm. a little weird. Like, I, I just remember going in like for my two week follow up appointment. Um, first of all, being greeted by the receptionist saying, oh, how's the baby? I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, not the question to be asking as I like completely break down in tears. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we were, t- were talking to the doctor and again, she was like kind of reviewing, like on the computer, reviewing everything saying, you know, all the same stuff, you know, her placenta was on the smaller side, but it wasn't small enough to have caused this. And, you know, all of your blood work came back fine, like no evidence of like infection or, mm-hmm. you know, anything else. So, you know, a lot of times we just can never find an answer, essentially. So, I mean, we were basically left with, we don't know what caused this. And, you know, that doesn't help me especially because I mean the amount of guilt that you feel after this happens is is unbearable it's staggering yeah I mean I remember coming home and like you know my husband just looking at me and I just felt like so ashamed and disgraced like I couldn't deliver you a healthy baby like I I took this from you and I did something to have caused this, which is, I mean, I think a lot of people feel like that, but it's just so, I mean, I still feel guilty over what happened and I don't, I don't know if I ever will not feel guilty. I mean, I logically, I know that I didn't do anything to have caused this, but it's so hard to like, get yourself to believe that Mm -hmm. um but I it was probably around February or so that I was like okay I need to find out that there's nothing wrong with me you know Mm -hmm. medically that may have led to this so I started seeing you know my PCP and getting checked for things and and I met with an MSM which is when we finally actually got the autopsy report she gave us a copy of it oh okay where we had I mean obviously I I don't know what any of it says really but it basically says you know the cause of death remains elusive Mm. so which I didn't I didn't want to believe that um so I actually had sent my placenta to a placenta pathologist at Yale mm-hmm. um, to kind of get his insights on what may have happened. Right. Um, and he came back and 
and basically said, yeah, her placenta was extremely small. It was on the 0.5 percentile. For size to support a baby. Compared to her, her birth weight. Yeah. So it was really small. He was like, it sure was efficient for keeping her alive as long as it did. But he also saw evidence of, of cord compression, um, oh. which is likely what was the final nail in the coffin. Because um, he thinks like at that time, her placental size, I mean, probably she probably would have lived if it wasn't for that cord compression. Okay. Um, and that's when he asked, you know, was her face dark? when she was born yeah and he said yeah that nuchal cord like if that nuchal cord got compressed her face would have likely been dark so it may have been the nuchal cord yeah that that was the issue I mean I guess we'll never really know yeah um but a lot of evidence actually points that direction according to that researcher that sounds yeah like. yeah and some of the things that he had found agrees with the autopsy that mm. was done at our hospital. Okay. I just don't think that they think that that would have been that a small placenta could be the sole cause of the, of a stillbirth. Mm. Okay. Because I know there are some, some placental pathologists that, that don't believe that. <sighs> I'm sorry again, Katie, for your loss and, I wanted to, I, I thank you so much for telling Everly's story. I, I do have a couple last questions. I want, I always like to ask about the name. How did you come up with Everly? You kind of had been holding on to that and that was the only name on your list. And so tell me why you chose Everly and even her yeah. middle name. Like, well, her middle name is, is actually my middle name. Oh, is it? Okay. Which is actually a family name. It's my mother's maiden name. So, oh, cool. um, okay. Yeah. So I don't know. I just always felt like, you know, I just pass on the, mm -hmm. the tradition. I don't know. And Everly, it was just a name I came across and it instantly stuck. I always thought it was like, it sounded like a name out of a fairy tale. I, oh, totally. I had pictured, oh, her birth announcements will say like, happily Everly after, oh. <laughs> you know, like I, it just stuck. And and luckily, my husband liked it too. <laughs> I don't know what I would have thought if he didn't like it. <laughs> um, but you know, you know, now we instead of happily everly after, you know, we say foreverly remembered. Um, and it's kind of our our slogan for her. Oh, so yeah. Beautiful. I just think it's such a pretty name, and it is a very like this fairy tale esque name. <laughs> Yeah, pretty. I just wish it was a happy ending and yeah. not a, a sad one. Yeah. Thank you again, Katie. I um, My last question then is, is there anything else you would like to tell us about Everly or anything that you want to remember about her? Yeah, I just, my husband always said that she came out looking just like me. But I, I don't believe that because she had like such you know chubby cheeks chubby face and like a round head and if if you look at his baby pictures <laughs> it's exactly like him so <laughs> I just wish he could see that um, <laughs> but I I just I just don't want her to live in like a shadow I want people to know her and to hear her story and and hopefully that her life will make a difference in some way, shape or form, you know, even though she's not here, you know, I just hope that, that her memory and her story will, will live on and hopefully, you know, save other babies if, if they can or, or something like that. <laughs> it's probably not very eloquently spoken, but. No, you always just want your babies to, you want to make a difference in in your life and of course you would want that for your daughter too yeah thank you again katie for for sharing everly with us thank you for letting me tell her story anytime anytime